welcome to today's virtual lab. Today we want to look at a pregnant rat here and learn a little bit about the female reproductive system. If you remember from Anatomy 1 when we dissected male rats, they had the testicles present and there wasn't a whole lot else that was readily visible. But in the female we were able to easily find the forked uterus where the babies would be. This rat has been labeled as pregnant so we're about to find out if that is in fact the case. I expect that it is, but every once in a while you get a surprise. Before we go inside the rat, let's take a look at the outside surface here. And what we're able to see is the presence of the nipples. So here we have one nipple. There's another one here. And they're scattered all the way down the side on both sides here. And this sets the rat up to be able to feed her litter. So humans have two nipples, basically two mammary glands, to support what we would normally expect to see as no more than twins, typically just one, but this female rat is going to have to support a number of babies. And exactly how many we'll see once we get inside. I have, however, have found th these rats sometimes to contain as many as 16 babies at a time, so we'll see exactly how many are in there when we get there. So I think now we're ready to actually go inside and take a look at what's going on in there. So we'll go ahead and open her up here and see what we've got to work with. Some people like to use a pair of scissors for this. That would also work. I really, myself, just like to slice into things. So I'll cut some flaps here so that we can see inside, hopefully, with minimal disruption. So here we have the inside, let's get the fluid dumped out there, and we can see all the stuff we would expect to see. We've got our liver, over here is our spleen, small intestines, large intestines, all that sort of stuff we would normally expect to see. I'm going to go ahead and take that out, so it will be out of our way. We're not interested in necessarily seeing those regular organs, so if they're out of our way, we'll be able to focus on the interesting stuff which in this case is going to be the uterus with babies. And I can tell you that this rat is in fact pregnant. So we'll get that stuff out of the way there. And most of what we see remaining here inside is uterus. So here's one side of the uterus right here. We can see a number of babies scattered throughout. And over here on the other side is the other side of that forked uterus. So remember in the rat you would have looked at in anatomy one, that uterus was very small in diameter because those rats had never been pregnant. But this rat, you can see what was once before about the thickness of a piece of spaghetti is now enlarged to the size of, let's say, uh, medium-sized beans. This rat was probably about, I would guess, two weeks away from giving birth, which means that in the two weeks after this rat uh, was packaged up for our dissection purposes, if that extra two weeks of growth had occurred, these babies would have about tripled in size. So at this point, there was a little bit of space there in the abdominal cavity, but when those babies grew to three times their size, it would have been pretty tight and crowded there, not a whole lot of room for things to move around. Uh, females, uh, humans who have been pregnant, report also that as the baby grows, there's less room for everything else, and so it becomes quite tight in there. Let's just take a look at this particular side of the uterus here and see how many babies are in there. So if we get it all stretched out, get these legs spread out a little bit for us here. So if we stretch out this particular side of the uterus, we can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven babies in that side. If we look at the other side, we find 
one, two, three, four, and five. So five babies on the right side and seven babies on the left side. So that was going to give us a total count of 12 babies total here. And you, you often see this. One side has a few more babies than the other side. But regardless here, 12 babies are produced from one mama is a pretty significant number. Now these babies are a little bit smaller than I was hoping we would find in here. And so that's going to make this next step a little bit tricky. But what we want to do is we want to take out one of those babies and see if we can keep the placenta intact and hopefully keep the umbilical cord intact. So you would see the same sort of arrangement you'd see in a human with the placenta, the uh, umbilical cord connection. So I'm going to try here, no promises, because these are pretty small babies here. Ideally they would have been about twice this size. But I'll do my best to get one out. It looks like they're all about the same size. So let's just go for this one right here towards the end. See if I can get them removed without disconnecting too much stuff and hopefully be able to appreciate the placenta and the umbilical cord and all that good stuff. So it might take a minute here to get this opened up. Again, I don't want to do any more damage than I have to. Basically tearing open the uterus here to get to the baby inside. It's also a little bit difficult to hang on to this small stuff. It's nice and slippery. We're starting to make a little progress here. No, it doesn't look very exciting yet, and it might not even when I get it out. Again, a bigger one would be much more exciting here, but... This was the only pregnant rat we had left in the cabinet. So, we're going to do the best we can. I've removed the entire baby here. And we're going to start working our way in here, taking things apart a little bit. And I'm just going to go out on a limb here and predict that we're not going to get a very wonderful view of anything here because this is so, so tiny of a stuff. Okay, there we go. We're making a little progress here. Bear with me, some boring stuff, but I think we're going to get to a little tiny baby here in a minute. Last piece of tissue out of the way. Okay. So, what we have is, let's just look at this side. Everything you see here from this side is placenta. Okay. If we turn it over to this side, we can see that the placenta is the dark red stuff. And hopefully... Be able 
to get this placenta out of the way a little bit more. And see, hopefully you can see this, in the middle right here is the baby. So this is the head, there's a little limb bud there, so it's little, little legs right there, but mostly what we're seeing here is head and uh, legs. And all the rest of the stuff that this thing is sitting cocooned down inside of is uh, the placenta. So at this stage of development, the placenta is much larger than the baby itself. Over the next week or so of growth and development, that would have changed significantly, and the baby would have gotten bigger than placenta. So at this stage, another week would have made the baby itself a little bit bigger than this whole mass is, and the placenta would not have gotten any bigger, so it would have been a much better view. I'm going to try to go ahead and get the baby kind of slid out of the placenta here a little bit. And again, it's so small and delicate that it's going to be difficult without tearing things up. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to just remove pieces of the placenta a little bit at a time and then hopefully be left with mostly baby. And I talked about seeing an umbilical cord before. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that on this tiny of a thing. But we'll try and see. If we were in the classroom what I would do is I would pull out a dissecting microscope which would allow me to look at this whole thing under a microscope and much more precisely take it apart. Right now I don't have that kind of equipment here in my home filming studio. So I'm just having to fumble it with my fingers here and only use one hand at a time with a piece of equipment. slide mama out of the way to the side over here. Just a little bit more placenta come out of the way here and we'll be able to see. Okay, maybe you can see by now the paler area here, that's the baby. Let me get a little piece of paper towel and see if we can dry that off and make it a little bit more visible. drying. Sometimes getting some of those juices out of the way is helpful. I was hoping for this to be a much more exciting dissection. So my apologies on that. I'll try to find uh, maybe a, a dissection someone else has done on YouTube as a uh, perhaps a better view of what things would look like. But what I'm going to do is step over to the camera here and try to zoom in a little bit more on that. And again, you're going to see perhaps a little bit of head and some arms, legs kind of thing, but not much else. So hang loose here. That's about as good as my camera is going to do. So again, this was not nearly the kind of exciting dissection we were hoping for because the baby is so incredibly tiny. But um, try to give you a little bit of orientation here. We have head right here. We have body coming down. There's a little bit of a tail right down here and some little legs sticking out of the side. If this baby was much bigger, we could actually pull it out and see the umbilical cord and how it was connected to the placenta, but these are so tiny that just touching them with my probe and forceps here starts to completely destroy things. So, again, apologies, it's not what we hoped it would be, perhaps. And uh, looking again at all the other babies in here, everything's about the same size. 
so I don't expect that any of the others would be any clearer. One thing about doing a dissection is you never know what you're going to see until you actually open it up and see it. So uh, hopefully our future dissections will be more exciting and I'll do my best to find someone else's dissection on YouTube for you that would have bigger babies to be able to see. Thanks for checking it out and see you next time.